cut alfalfa as short as possible to miss the crowns and it will not hurt the yield of next cutting or the stand because alfalfa comes back from new shoots on the crown. Now a corollary to that that we have to think about is actually if we're delayed in harvesting and we're cutting full bloom alfalfa some of that will have new shoots coming up and we need to cut above the level of those regrow shoots so that we don't reduce the next cutting of alfalfa. But if we're cutting it to bud stage, they're usually not there so we can cut it any height. But our recommendation is generally to cut it about three inches. Uh, first, what we find is that if we cut a little bit higher, we pick up less dirt and dirt is not digestible to the cow. In fact, each 1%, we, we measure dirt by burning it and weighing the, we call it ash. Each 1% ash is 1% less TDN, one unit less TDN energy, since it's completely indigestible. So the lower we cut, the more ash we get, and that's not good. Alfalfa ash can be from about 7% on the low end up to about 15% of the dry matter, and if you have situations where you get a lot of soil splashing up you know during rain events uh, or irrigation events or when you have the, the uh, hay that's really close to the ground it picks up a lot of uh, dust or dust blows over the hay and, and deposits or you get ash coming from fires nearby or something like that it can actually lower the quality of the hay and so it's a key question is try, try to keep the soil away from the forage so it doesn't get bailed up uh, as part of the product. The other thing is that the base of the stems are lower in quality than the upper part. So as we cut lower, we do get a little bit more tonnage, but it's lower quality forage. And so again, we have to decide which is more important to us, the tonnage or the quality that we're looking at as we harvest. Cut lower for tonnage, higher for quality. In grasses, it's actually very important to cut higher because the grasses store their energy in the base of the stem, not in the root like alfalfa does. And so if we cut the grasses too short, then we've cut off their energy supply for regrowth and they can't come back. In fact, one of the ways to take grass out of alfalfa stands is to cut very short and then the grass will die out over a year or two. So our recommended cutting height for grass, tall fescue, orchard grass, would be in the four inch range. Now, if we're thinking about the Southern United States and we have Bermuda grass or Bahia grass, well then we can go back in and cut at one inch because again, then the carbohydrates are in the root. So you need to know what species. The cool season species of the North, three or four inches. The uh, Bermuda grass, Bahia of the South, we can cut at one inch. Grasses, we generally want to see a little bit higher cutting height with grasses because as stores, uh, the regrowth carbohydrates in the base of the tillers rather than in the, in the crown in the case of alfalfa. Uh, the other considerations though is that you want to have a little bit of stubble height there to, to hold the windrow up off the ground so that it, there's good air circulation in the windrow. In colder areas where snowfall is very, very critical for winter survival uh, and you need to have a layer of snow to insulate the, the soil from freezing and drying processes. And uh, in areas that are very windy and have maybe lower snowfall events, you need to capture that snow and keep it on the field rather than having it blow away. And so that's where stubble in the fall is really kind of a key uh, component of, of crop production in those areas. Many parts of the world where alfalfa is produced, uh, winter kill is really one of the biggest hazards. And so um, in many cases, you'd want to protect that crop by leaving a little bit of stubble out there um, so that it catches uh, catches the snow. The principle is that we want to have the alfalfa plant uh, produce a good level of carbohydrate and move it into the root so that that carbohydrate is full of energy for winter survival and for regrowth the next spring. And so in theory what we want to do is take our last cutting um, there's two ways of looking at it. Most of us say about six weeks ahead of a killing frost. The other uh, thing would be 500 growing degree days. You want to cut it late enough that it can grow up, use the carbohydrates, and then put them back. 
The other alternative is to cut so late in the fall that it won't regrow. So you can cut around a freeze killing frost and then, uh, then you'll still have high root carbohydrate levels because it hasn't regrown before winter set in. So it depends a little bit on where you are in the country, which practice you would use. But generally speaking, the idea is to make sure you enter the winter with a high level of root carbohydrates for winter survival and for spring regrowth.